Michigan State University's new strategic plan articulates a shared vision for the university through the end of the decade. MSU Strategic Plan 2030, Empowering Excellence, Advancing Equity, and Expanding Impact, has received the unanimous endorsement of the MSU Board of Trustees. MSU Strategic Plan 2030 identifies goals within six key themes, student success, staff and faculty success, discovery, creativity, and innovation for excellence and global impact, sustainable health, stewardship and sustainability, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. On this edition of MSU Today, we'll be focusing on the discovery, creativity, and innovation for excellence and global impact theme of the plan with its executive sponsors, Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, Teresa Woodruff, Executive Vice President for Health Sciences, Norman J. Beauchamp, Jr., and Vice President for Research and Innovation, Douglas Gage. Here's Michigan State University President Samuel L. Stanley, Jr., M.D. So, Russ, great to be with you, as always. Um, innovation for global impact is specifically, particularly dear to my heart. Um, I used to be run research uh, in, in innovation, if you will, at Washington and St. Louis. That was one of my first administrative jobs. And what I saw there is what I see at MSU, which was extraordinary capacity, extraordinary people um, who really can make a difference, and our job to help them succeed and help find ways for them to reach their full potential in their research work and have the full impact it should. So that involves, again, reducing the barriers to them submitting grants, reducing, make it easier for them to work in grants, and then doing work that is valuable and helping them do that, so helping facilitate that. So that involves, again, uh, new facilities that we have, such as the FRIB, which really are going to make us a leader in nuclear physics across the world. It involves collaborations that we do with other scientists around the world and facilitating that. All of these things are about having impact. And I think our extension makes us particularly good at doing applied research. So I think we have capabilities in applied research that other places don't. And that's another exciting thing about this component. So we have an ambitious goal for this one, a billion dollars in research expenditures. Um, that's going to take a lot of work, but I'm excited about the pathway to get there. And I think, again, I think hopefully the campus is excited about what we'll be able to do going forward. This is that area where we really change people's lives and make a difference, not just in our campus, not just in our state, um, not just in the United States, but in the world. And MSU is doing that every day. And the chance to do it on an even larger scale and have a greater impact is very exciting. At Michigan State, we pursue <clears throat> excellence in service to the common good, generating new knowledge and applying it to address complex societal problems. When we say discovery, creativity, and innovation for excellence and global impact, what do we mean and how will growth in annual research expenditures to $1 billion help us have more local and global impact? Well, Russ, that's a that's a big question. This is Teresa Woodruff, the provost. I'm here with Doug and with Norm. And, uh, you know, you have to have all three of us because that is such a big question. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think uh, excellence in the service of the common good is a, a phrase that I just really gravitate toward. And um, I think our tripartite mission of teaching and research and outreach and engagement really represents the different ways in which that excellence and service to the common good is lived out. And I guess if you did a word cloud of what I just said, we've got a lot of ands, uh, not ors. Um, this is a place that and is always part of our mission. And uh, we interdigitate in each of these areas. Our faculty teach and do research, uh, and then they apply that work uh, to help solve real life problems and real communities that affect real people. And you know, I, I like to think of MSU as having research and scholarship with reach. And uh, as we continue to grow our research expenditures and um, really, I think what we'll be able to do, uh, Doug, is to accelerate what we're able to learn as we think about the grand challenges that our world faces. So I'm really excited um, about our global impact initiative. It really is gonna support the growth and accelerate the pace of discovery uh, by recruiting new faculty in some of the most exciting areas of, of research and by growing this annual kind of firepower within research and scholarship, I think we're going to go deeper and broader in what we do, but we're going to be able to act 
locally and globally in solving the world's most pressing needs. So that, those are some of my thoughts. Yeah. yeah, let me build on what uh, Teresa said. This is Doug Gage. I'm the Vice President for Research and Innovation. So uh, growing our research expenditures to 1 billion really means that our research activities are gonna expand by more than $250 million annually. And so we'll actually be conducting more research, which means we'll be making more discoveries and ultimately educating more students and bringing more solutions forward. And we're gonna be working to expand our research programs across the board, but increasing activities in some really critical areas such as equitable healthcare, climate change, mobility, international uh, development, and many other programs which are, are critical both globally and specifically to Michigan and the, and the United States. Uh, my office will play a key role in facilitating new research projects. We're going to be working across the entire campus to try to build on these new programs. And many of them will be interdisciplinary. So we're going to have lots of uh, uh, interactions over the next uh, few years. And we're really looking forward to that. This effort really looks at improving health by promoting treatment and prevention. It contributes to society by driving economic growth, productivity, and, and helping to address social determinants of health through access to education and job creation. And it expands biomedical knowledge by you know, funding cutting edge research and cultivating the future biomedical workforce of today and tomorrow. So very excited about what this means in terms of MSU's land grant mission and this essential arm and what's needed to bring health, hope and healing to all people. And so what are the key areas that will be part of this push to $1 billion? Well, Russ, that $1 billion is a big number, a huge number. It feels big and it feels ambitious. And uh, I think that's really exciting. We have enormous strengths uh, that uh, really rise out of our roots of this um, land grant university. Our plan, I think, really is, and Doug and Norm will tell us even more, but really to bring together disciplines in new ways and really to think about how we can intersect between new ideas and state-of-the-art equipment and, you know, the ways in which problems emerge that we can uniquely solve. And, you know, a couple of examples of that, and Doug will probably talk more about this, but the facility for rare isotope beams, we have, you know, just an, an incredible facility, and that's going to allow us to have, play a vital role in the next generation of scientific leaders and innovators, and as normal tell us in, in health, healing, and hope. And, you know, we're, we're going to leverage our expertise in cryogenics, something that uh, we're already leading, really um, also looking at ways to apply some of the new isotopes and from testing materials for state, uh, for space flight, and looking at biomedical imaging and diagnostics as well as therapeutics. And this is really coupled. This is a great example because it's coupled with our number one ranked graduate program in nuclear physics. So you combine superb faculty, outstanding facilities, a number one graduate program. You know, we really can actually uh, create um, what I call a spiral of excellence. And a, a second area really is in uh, improving agricultural practices and food crop yields and food security, something that you know, remarkably is on our horizon and something that you, um, MSU can uniquely um, work in. And, and then the, the last one, I'll turn it over to my partners to expand even further, but is in educational research and really preparing teachers and educational leaders and change makers. Uh, we have a top ranked college of education and the more we educate, the better the world is. And um, it is something that uh, we're really proud of and uh, and it's, it's in that educational domain that we're going to lean into um, uh, with many other uh, domains uh, to that $1 billion. Doug, what, what a, there's a lot more I've missed. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think, uh, you know, the, the, the key is that we're not, it's not a single uh, investment that's going to make that $1 billion. It's really about building on a whole variety of things. So including, you know, areas of strength that Teresa mentioned, the FRIB and nuclear physics. Plant science, uh, we're leading a, a research institution in that area, agriculture. So these are all opportunities that we can build uh, upon. 
But we're, we are also going to have an opportunity, I think, to go into new areas that are going to give us the chance to uh, expand what we do at Michigan State University. So I could think about things like AI, machine learning, quantum computing, advanced materials, translational medicine, all these things which, which really are, are going to allow us to sort of not just do what we've already done, but to go into brand new areas. And so that involves bringing in uh, new faculty, uh, new partners, commercial entities who might work with us to develop some of these new ideas, and new agencies, which uh, funding agencies, which we hope to develop as well. So I think there are, there are lots of opportunities here. If we had to reach the, the, the 1 billion number on, on one strategy, we wouldn't get there. So we really have to bring our everything we have to bear on this. And as, as Teresa said, a lot of it is going to be interdisciplinary and developing new areas, which MSU just is very is positioned to really develop and take advantage of. As we think about this effort in health, it really will take a convergence of strengths across the university. You can look, for example, at the Pediatric Public Health Initiative, and to be successful there in trying to improve the health of the community, it required expertise from education, communications, geography, toxicology, nutrition, epidemiology, psychology, child development, pediatrics, and more. And so uh, the point would be that as we think about how we'll move the dial uh, and particularly passion about health disparities, it will give a chance for us to mobilize the, the entire university. One of the things that the strategic plan calls out and both Doug and Teresa have been such um, advocates for is this no silos approach uh, to advancing research and just connecting strengths and finding ways to foster that. And you know, you've all touched on some way on Michigan State's world-renowned research and how it spans everything from nuclear physics to plant biotechnology, K-12 education to digital humanities and beyond. Say more about how these spirals of excellence cross all of our missions, enrich our educational outreach and research excellence. That's such a good question. I think really these spirals of excellence that we're building are, are predicated on foundations of strength and then we build upward towards uh, what we think are going to be beacons, both so people can uh, light the way uh, to coming towards MSU, as well as to, um, uh, to provide assets that the world desperately needs. And you know, we're really in a changing time. There's an evolving nature of work, different ways in which uh, we experience health, uh, the workplace. Um, and so all these changes uh, necessitate new ways of doing research and thinking, and so these rapid technological advances in artificial intelligence or automation. They really are reshaping education and all of our skill sets. And, you know, so what we're doing at, at MSU is really part of a fourth industrial revolution that's changing education systems, changing labor markets. It's advancing. We're, we're advancing this through our research and really helping society to adapt to, to all of these changes. So as you mentioned, Russ, across all these different areas, we're building these spirals that take into account the world that we find it today. And we uh, believe that these spirals can be really catalytic, sparking curiosity and innovation and discovery across the community that now can see each other. And you know there, this creates a multiplier effect so that each point of contact becomes new knowledge, new value, new positive um, outcomes. And, and this, this is because our research is not in isolation. We mentor, we teach, it's all interoperable. And that's what allows MSU to have the biggest, broadest, baddest, best impact. <laughs> and uh, so I think all of that is true. And I, I will also say that the glue, you mentioned plants and K-20 and all of the other parts of this. I think one of our spirals that really helps all of us is the glue is, is our uh, MSU art strategy. Uh, and that really integrates arts into uh, all of the ways we think and work. It, it, it is research, it is scholarship itself, and it also is a predicate for some of the most creative endeavors that we can do. So really by designing a deliberate environment that understands the world that we found it two years ago is no longer the same and that our uh, community can really walk into this challenge and, 
and work effectively and ethically in, a, in this world, um, those represent some of the parts of spirals and create an MSU for the future. I think research and scholarship is really is integral to everything we do. So creating new knowledge and then transmitting that to the next generation of, of scholars is really essential for a, 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 an institution of our, of our type. And we extend that knowledge then not just to our students, but to communities we serve through outreach efforts and, and uh, partnerships. I, I want to say one other thing, and that is that, you know, actually involving undergraduates in research and scholarship is uh, something we've had a long history of at, at Michigan State University. I think uh, many of us who ended up in, in the STEM fields, we actually started out as, a, you know, working in a laboratory or working with a a scholar, you know, I, I uh, started my own career as a dishwasher in a, in a laboratory. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's how you get the exposure to, mm -hmm. you know, what science is all about, what scholarship is all about. And I think that's something we really take great pride in. We don't say research and education are separate. That's not at all the case at this university. We are, they are entirely integrated, entirely synergistic. This integration, this tight coupling of, you know, what are the problems we solve? to how we educate. I would add, you know, the third uh, step in, in that is, is, at least in the health colleges, and is this clinical delivery of care, right? And the goal that every single day, uh, we need to say, what couldn't I do for the people I serve? And if it's not what, what, what should be possible, then you wanna look at the arc of, is there existing knowledge and apply that? But if there's not, then you want to go up to discovery and drive that through. And a key part of what our students have asked is how do they learn how to think about discovery? How do they make it when they practice that they're on the lookout for opportunities to discover? And as, as Doug talked about, giving our students access to being involved with research is one of the things that can happen at a place like MSU where there are those breaths of opportunity, but, but you can't have that unless there is a, a depth and a breath of research happening in the institution. Our goal is to train that next generation of practitioners who help redefine what healthcare can be. So tell me about the geographic reach of our discovery and innovation work and talk about the importance of our impact in Michigan and our global footprint. Boy, this is one of the things that's so amazing about MSU is just its, its reach. And uh, that was something that I was just so attracted to MSU. It's, it's research within reach. It's not research in some mythical ivory tower. We have a commitment at MSU that's really remarkable across the entire state of Michigan and to the global community, another and uh, in our little word cloud that we're building. And it's central to our mission and our values. And so as a top global university, we continue to push the boundaries to make the world better. And you know, to start with, that's here in Michigan. And uh, true to our uh, land grant mission, uh, we reach into all 83 Michigan counties through extension and through our healthcare community that Norm, I know you'll talk about. And Doug, extension is such an important part of what we do across the state. And that means that the entire state is Michigan State uh, University. We are all part of this, uh, this great community. And you know that I think is really quite exciting. We're a top 40 research university by Washington Monthly 2021 rankings. And that, that really should make everyone in Michigan really proud of us. Um, we've had about, what, five, $5.8 billion in economic impact statewide. I know there's been a couple of these that have been done, Norm and, and, and Doug, and about 80% of our undergraduates are from here in Michigan and 65% of them stay in Michigan. That, that's exciting. That says we're really having an impact. And if we look globally, and I said when I came here, I'm a globalist. Uh, I really think about the, the entire uh, circumference of the world. And we have Spartans literally everywhere around the world. And our research is making a difference, about $82 million in annual funding for international work. We're the number one top-ranked public university for education abroad. 
Um, and we have about 1,400 of our faculty and academic staff members who are engaged in international research and teaching. And you know, in our uh, in our ISP, we have 30, uh, just over 30, I think, internationally focused centers. So. Michigan State has made a commitment to being uh, available to um, everyone who has need for, for education and uh, for learning something new and for building across the globe and across the great state of Michigan. It's, it's just a very exciting, it's an exciting place to be. Yeah, I think it's, it's important to, again, emphasize that you know, we take our mission to serve public good very seriously. You know, Michigan State University has a, a reach that goes from, you know, the smallest rural counties to, you know, the biggest urban centers. And, you know, even, uh, you know, if we leave the United States, you know, one can uh, wear a, a baseball cap with a helmet on it <laughs> and go into uh, Zambia or something like that. And someone will say to you, go green. Um, <laughs> We are there, and they know who we are. The, the, we serve, you know, not just our own interests, but the interests of the world. When we look at international partnerships, I mean, and that, that really is the key to our service. It's a partnership model that we don't come in with solutions to deliver. We come in to build those solutions together. And we have a very strong history of that that goes back many decades if we look at U.S. Uh, Agency for International Development and international foundations, you know, we are very well represented and in, in often a, a key partner for those agencies and funders. So we, we are very proud of that legacy and we want to continue it and build upon it. So, you know, during the pandemic, uh, travel and outreach was, was certainly uh, impacted and we're very anxious to get back to work with our international partners and develop, you know, capacity for food production, for example, and you know other other things. That particularly, you know, uh, climate change is not just a, a, an issue for for us. It's a it's a global issue, and so we we can envision that we're going to have a, a role to play and and it's solutions to help develop solutions anyway around the world to assist uh, our partners. Many of our programs, we are in every county in the state, right? And we're really proud of how we have pathway programs that are connections from where people are growing up to where we can help them train so that they can serve their communities. Uh, another component of the work that's being done, um, Russ, is recognizing that we live in a knowledge economy. And as we look at partnerships between academia and industry, right, one of the things that happens is these, these new ideas, this innovation, technology, machines, decision support, right, they then connect into opportunities to connect with industry, which brings resources, both technology and and. and human capability to partnerships on campus, but it also gives us a global distribution. So but the, the point of that is that, you know, education, research, clinical care, as well as uh, the partnerships that we have uh, make the reach of Michigan State uh, global. I wonder if you might want to say something about just the importance of basic scientific research and research that universities do. This is an oversimplification. Sometimes I think the typical taxpayer no, if Norm starts an experiment 10 months later, there should be a product or a cure for something. And, you know, the iPhone was probably born by something that went nowhere in a lab 50 years ago. There's a question in there somewhere, but I just think, why is it so important that we do this important research? One can look at, at research in a very applied way. And, and we do quite a significant amount of applied work, uh, particularly in you know, areas of agriculture, education, and other areas where, you know, an, an outcome is really, you know, desired in, in, the, in the short term. But there's also curiosity-driven research, which will have outcomes which aren't always predictable, sometimes vastly under, undervalued when they're, when they're initiated. And often to the, even the, uh, the, the developers of that, of uh, some uh, research, 
they may not even initially have realized the, the value of it. And, you know, that, that goes uh, everything from, uh, you know, when we look at uh, computer science, for example, that those were, you know, in the early days, was, you know, was sort of, a, you know, sort of the, the, the uh, dabblings of some mathematicians. And it's really transformed the world. So there's lots of things like that that happen in, in very unpredictable ways. And so we have to have a place where that can happen. And that, that's really, uh, universities are, are best positioned for that. Uh, companies can't afford to you know, take uh, the long view like that and hope something good comes out of it. You know, that those days where, where that sort of uh, opportunity was, uh, was present in, in the corporate sector, is really diminished. And so now it's the partnership perhaps where fundamental research looks promising. And then we then in partnership with uh, commercial entities help to develop that into something practical that, that, that happens many times. So there are lots of opportunities, I think, for us to do that. But it's, uh, you know, sometimes some things are practical and from the very beginning and some things are unpredictable. And of course, there's failure along the way. So we, you know, nothing is... Uh, uh, investment will happen. Uh, there's always value in it in terms of education, in terms of learning from our mistakes or learning what didn't work. And, you know, we're going to try, you know, we are good stewards of uh, uh, the funds that we are, are, are given by the state and by the federal government for research. We don't take that lightly. We don't take it as a, as a play money. It's something that uh, we have to do our very best to deliver what, what we promise as, as we begin uh, to, to conduct research. Uh, you know, many of the, the great advances over the past century, such as computers, radars, lasers, x-rays, nuclear energy, heck, even MRA, mRNA vaccines, right, are traceable to basic science discoveries, right? Some made decades before their application. And the practical use may not be seen by the researchers who first, you know, made those discoveries. But if you look at industry, they often aren't going to invest in that work, right? There is a, they need a time, uh, a limited time to which they can bring things to market um, in order to meet the imperatives of their shareholders. But for us uh, in higher education, there's all the returns Doug talked about. And then ultimately we can have a longer view. And then one of the strengths of the breaths that the university brings is you can bring together these cohorts of people that do applied, that do basic, um, and then individuals whose focus is, is just clinical care, right? This is a milieu where they will connect. And I think that's also where some of that magic happens that brings the return for uh, basic science research. Well, Norm, you and, you and Doug just expressed it so brilliantly. And I, I think to summarize, you know, we, we do at MSU structured and unstructured work. In some cases, we're trying to get to a cure. In other cases, we're just trying to learn something new. And it's, it's something really extraordinary about MSU faculty because they run the gamut from creation to invention, to discovery, to expression, to revealing elements about ourselves and our world and our place in that world. And, you know, that's, that's really quite the gamut. And some of our faculty work examines the minutia of a bacteria or a plant cell or a chloroplast. And others look at the complex significance of artistic performance. Uh, I was at the MSU Wynn performance yesterday, which just was an extraordinary level of, of, um, of expression. And so the nature of this work helps us to understand, it helps us to contextualize, it can help to improve the human condition, or in fact, it may be completely abstracted from utility and exists solely as revealed knowledge. And that's what's special about Michigan State University. We value and celebrate the ephemeral from you know, the half-life of the shortest EFRIB, uh, <laughs> discovery um, to a single note uh, played by a bass bassoon to, you know, new knowledge about how we can engineer a chloroplast to have plant resilience. And so in the end, 
all these diverse products of the work of MSU can be, you know, they can be lauded by many. They might be known by a few. They might be appreciated for their extraordinary audacity or cited for their wisdom, or they may just be something that's talked about in a classroom setting. And that's the nature of work within a university. It is the most extraordinary place that doesn't exist anywhere else. And the fact that MSU takes this work and makes it unified, we say interoperable with teaching, I think is one of the, what makes this one of the most special places for discovery, for research on our way to that billion dollars and for all those students along the way who both participate in that basic or translation or clinical work or that performance and the rest of us whose lives are made better because of all of it. You know, there's a real sense of excitement uh, at what lies ahead right now. You know, we see uh, EFRIB coming online, uh, new opportunities for uh, research across all areas is something that that has really sort of captured the imagination of the folks at MSU. You know, research and the culture that we create is going to outlive all of us. And that's really our goal is to sort of create that, you know, the next generation and position the institution for, you know, continue the continued ability to deliver, you know, for, for decades to come. So we you know, this is that's our challenge and our and our responsibility is to really put our full effort into doing that. So it's all about what comes next, not not what we do or what happens today when we're around. So that that's a that's the exciting part, and I think all of us uh, are really looking looking forward to you know how we're, how that's going to develop and how we're going to be able to make those contributions. You know, Russ, I might say that one of our goals is to be inclusive in the research that we do in terms of clinical trials, right? Participation research should reflect the diversity, you know, of our culture, of conditions, and take into account race, ethnicity, gender, age, and that lack of diversity among researchers and research participants has, you know, both ethical and research consequences. And one of the wonderful things about Michigan State by virtue of the breadth of the people that are compelled to be a part of the work that we do is I think that we're well positioned to be a place where people of all backgrounds um, can participate in research um, and that we can help train the next generation of a diverse, more diverse group of scientists uh, at Michigan State. Well, and Norm, you just said it so beautifully as did you, Doug. And what I heard you talk about is excellence and equity in research and teaching is really what we're all about. And Doug, you, you said perfectly that we're here really to advance the institution in the future, but we're also creating new possibilities for its future. And this strategic plan that we're all working on contemplates our 175th year in 2030. Uh, you'll remember that's the demi semi septentrion uh, <laughs> <laughs> Work towards our 175th year is not the destination. It is, that's what we create now. And we're really creating the predicate for a long future because that's what higher education do, does. We'll be here for the long run because of our value and of our values and bringing as many people into this way of thinking and working is something that I think is just so exciting and so uniquely done at Michigan State and uh, I, I can't think of a better place to put my own research and scholarship uh, than with uh, the partners that I have in Norm and Doug and, and everyone that's here. It's a very exciting time for all of us. On this edition of MSU Today, we've been talking about the discovery, creativity, and innovation for excellence and global impact theme of MSU's Strategic Plan 2030, empowering excellence, advancing equity, and expanding impact with the executive sponsors of the theme, Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, Teresa Woodruff, Executive Vice President for Health Sciences, Norman J. Beauchamp, Jr., and Vice President for Research and Innovation, Douglas Gage.
Read and learn more about MSU Strategic Plan 2030 at strategicplan.msu.edu. I'm Russ White for MSU Today.